I really wish I would have thought of this when I was putting it up there. All right, the comment section of one of my previous videos when I built these threaded rod shelves really inspired me to build this lift. The number one question was, how do you get your snowblower up there? Why did you put your snowblower up there? Well, I put it up there because I didn't want to store it on the ground and we have a really small garage. And how did I get it up there? I put it up there on a ladder. But uh, you guys were right and when it came to getting it down, it wasn't so fun. So it's been sitting up there for over a year now and it's time to get it down. So I think I got a little better way of doing it this time. All right, so every one of my projects starts off with doing as much research as possible. And, and for me, that's normally starts with watching as many YouTube videos as possible and then trying to make a, a good solid sketch of my ideas. Uh, and then because of what I do, I definitely have to do some 3D modeling. Now that I have a plan, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some two by fours to make the platform for the hoist. Here you can see I'm marking out all the locations for screws where I'm going to screw these boards together. I like to mark them out, uh, use a speed square so I have a nice straight line so the screws kind of line up with each other. Then I'm going to pre-drill them and screw them all together. Here I'm using 3 quarter inch maple plywood. Yeah, a little bit overkill, uh, but that's kind of to match the rest of the shelves that I already built. I just marked it out real quick and then using the Craig track saw, which I'm really loving the way that this thing cuts, I uh, used this to cut out the rough sizes and then I came back in with a jigsaw and cut out the pieces that I couldn't get with the track saw. Off camera, I went ahead and gave this thing a coat of paint, a white high gloss paint on the 2x4s, and then a coat of Danish oil on the maple plywood, just to kind of further match the shelves that I already built. Then using one and a quarter inch deck screws, I screwed the plywood down to the 2x4s. Here's the hardware that I'm using for the platform. These are 3 8 by 6 inch long eye bolts. I have one inch washers and then three eighths inch nylon stop washers so that they don't back out. To install the hardware to the platform, I needed to drill some holes in all four corners. I went two inches in from each one of the ends um, and I started with a one inch paddle bit, almost the same exact size as the washers. After I had the hole drilled with the paddle bit, I came back in with a three eighths inch drill bit and drilled all the way through to the other side. The last step was to take off the blue tape, and the blue tape was just there to keep most of the splintering down. The last step for the platform is to mount the trolley wheels that'll ride in the super strut, which I've mounted to the walls. Here's the super strut that I bought from Lowe's. This is what those trolley wheels will ride in. Um, it's only sold in 10 foot lengths and I needed an eight foot piece. So I cut it down with a jigsaw. Once I had it cut down, then I pre-drilled holes every foot in the solid areas of it so that I could install it to the wall with screws. And I had to install it with screws because those trolley wheels wouldn't fit with a larger bolt head. Out in the garage, I installed the super strut rails to the wall. 
Uh, the first step was to find the studs. I found their locations down at the bottom of the wall, the middle of the wall, and then the top, just to make sure I really knew where those things were. Uh, each one of these rails will directly line up with a stud in the wall. Uh, so I lined up the first one, made sure it was level and plumb, and then screwed it in in all the pre-drilled locations. Then when I went to put up the second rail, I really wanted to make sure that it was an equal distance away from the second one. So that as that platform is going up and down, those trolley wheels are not binding up. These two rails are 100% parallel. Here are the cabinet screws that I used. Uh, they're a long screw with a larger head on them. Uh, and I use these because they're really super low profile and the trolley wheels will be able to pass over them unlike a larger bolt and washer. The next step was to draw out all the holes in the ceiling, and I did this first so that I had identification marks up in the attic, so I knew exactly where those pulleys had to go up in the attic to line up with the platform that's going to be in the garage. Here's what I ended up installing in the attic above those holes. Uh, so that you can see at the bottom here, they are held up by 4x4s. Those 4x4s connect into the rafters using 4x4 joist hangers. And then on top of that, I have two 2x4s that are stretching or spanning that distance. In between those two 2x4s is a pulley. Um, I modified this pulley from one that I bought at Harbor Freight. So I took off the hook and took out their bolts. I replaced them with longer 3 8 inch bolts, washers, and stop nuts so that they don't back out. And then I also have these metal L brackets. I think they're called hurricane straps that I use just to kind of anchor those two by fours down to the four by fours. There you can see the pulley down in there, how it comes up vertically and the cable is going to come out one side of the two by four there. But that's a, a better look of what's going to happen up in the attic. Then here's an example of the horizontal pulleys that go up in the attic. So at this point I have cables coming up through the ceiling and then they're coming out towards the center of the garage. These will be installed horizontally so that I can now get the cables moving in another direction. I can get them centrally located so that they can all get to one place and I can attach them to my manifold that will then connect to the hoist. And yet again, I modify those Harbor Freight pulleys, uh, taking out their bolts, taking off the hook and replacing them with 3 8 inch bolts, washers and nuts. All right, and here's the heavy lifting part of the, the project here, the thing that makes it all work. You can see that I'm using a, a cheaper, a relatively cheap Harbor Freight electric winch. Uh, this one's rated for 880 pounds uh, with, a, with a double loop going through a snatch block. This is only the, kind of the single stretch of cable, so it's only rated at 440 pounds in this orientation. Um, but I have it connected to a 2x10 with two 4x4s on either side and then a piece of super strut on the top. Um, you can see that I ran an additional wire. I'm not going to show you how to rewire this thing, but you can see that I have a wire that runs into the control box there that ex extending the length of the controller. Uh, really, the big thing you need to, to be aware of there is you can't use Romex. Uh, for this wire, you have to have four insulated conductors. And there's some other really good videos that show you how to rewire this thing. Yet again, I'm not a professional electrician, so I don't want to go too deep into there, but it did end up working out really well for me. Um, you can see that the cable of the hoist comes down into my manifold. Uh, the manifold's made out of an extra piece of super strut that I had left over, a bunch of eye bolts, yet again with washers and stop nuts. And then they go down into the tensioners that it will allow me to adjust and tighten those cables individually. So that if I don't get them 100% tight the first time, I can tighten those up, loosen them up, so that I can get the platform 100% level. And then this whole thing will be bolted and screwed into the rafters in this same exact orientation like it is right now. All right, so here's what it looks like up in the attic. And I didn't film this process because I live in Ohio and it's down in the teens right now. So it was not a pleasant thing. I'm not gonna lie being up here in the attic this time of year. Uh, so a, bit, a little bit better planning would have worked better. But at any rate, you can see what's going on here, and it's not real light. Uh, but you can see that all the way over on the left-hand side here, I have the hoist mounted to that 2x10 that is screwed and lag screwed uh, to the rafters. I wired up an outlet to it so that I could plug it in. Um, and then I have the cable kind of one stretch connecting into my manifold. Uh, the manifold, like you saw, was made up of a bunch of different eye bolts that are connected to uh, the turnbuckles so that I can adjust it. The turnbuckles then go into 
all of the eighth inch stainless steel cable that goes into one set of pulleys, directs, directs them off into a different direction, then down into the platform. Uh, you can see that up here I had to use some plywood and create like a little shelf for the manifold to ride on uh, because when you're pulling the lift up, it tensions and the cables move up. Uh, lift off of the platform, but when you are letting it down or you know reducing pressure on it, those cables tend to sag down. Um, and I just wanted to give it a nice smooth place to ride on so that we didn't have any problems. So I just put that up there as a safety precaution um, to make this thing operate a little bit better. But this is what it looks like up in the attic. Then back down in the garage, I needed to install the platform. Uh, I just lifted it up to the top of the super strut and put the trolley wheels inside the rails and lowered it all the way down uh, so that I could start connecting the cables. Then when it came to installing the cables, I lowered the, the platform all the way to the bottom and I pulled the winch out to its full out position where I wanted it to be when the platform was at the bottom so you have the right cable length and I installed all the cables to the eye bolts. Um, I did this by first putting on the mechanical cable clamps put them through the eye bolt. I put on a thimble to help hold the cable and so it doesn't crimp too bad. Uh, and then I went around and made sure that I really tightened these cable clamps down pretty tight. Um, I chose to go with the mechanical ones so I could really feel how tight they're getting um, and I could adjust them and, and kind of continue to add tension to them later. There are a bunch of different type of cable clamps out there. They make aluminum ones that you can just crimp and those ones hold pretty tight too. I just went with mechanical ones. Once all the cables were connected, I went into the adjustment process where I was going up and down into the attic and adjusting the turnbuckles to get each one of the cables tight. You can see that I have some weight on here to keep some tension on the cables. I ended up putting a bunch of weight on this and leaving it overnight to try to help stretch out the cables a little bit. Then when it actually comes to getting the snowblower down, I needed to create another little platform, a little bridge platform, because my lift doesn't make it all the way over to the other shelf because I didn't want it going over top of this little man door here. So I created this little platform, drilled four holes into it, and I pin it up there with hitch pins to connect the lift and the shelves together. You can see the pins on this side of the lift fit super tight, and I actually have to pound them in with a hammer. Um, but once those pins are in, just for kind of safety purposes, I do put cotter pins in each one of those pins so they're not coming out. Uh, but as tight as they fit, they wouldn't come out anyway. Not bad. Then you can see I still have to lift the snowblower a little bit uh, because of the way the foundation wall is in my garage. All right, I must admit, I don't think this lift came out too bad. Uh, it was definitely a little bit more of a difficult project than I've ever done because I've never done anything with a hoist or a pulley before. Um, and I should say before you start a project like this or you want to tackle a project like this, uh, short disclaimer, like I'm showing you what I did, maybe not necessarily how I would recommend you doing it. Uh, I think this thing is super strong. I think it's gonna hold up for anything that I put on here. Uh, the winch is rated for 880 pounds. Um, the way that I have it rigged up, it's only 440, but it's more than enough weight for anything that I'm ever gonna put on here. Uh, this snowblower is only about 185 pounds, so I'm well within kind of my limit there. Uh, the cables are rated for like 13, 14, 1500 pounds, something like that. All the eye bolts and all of those, I checked to make sure that we weren't going over on those. They're each rated at like 150 or 160 pounds, something like that for each one of those, which doesn't sound like very much, but if you distribute the weight evenly, um, you know, you're not, you're not putting too much load on any one of those corners. Um, but really the reason that I did this project was because when I built these shelves up here, there were two main things that I saw in the comments. Number one was, 
how the heck are you going to get your snowblower down? And so it, they made a good point. Uh, I went to go get it down before this winter and it wasn't going to be an easy task. So I decided to come up with this thing uh, to make it a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm probably only going to use this lift maybe two, three times a year to get things up and down. But uh, when I do need it, it it's a it's a lifesaver. It's a back saver. It's, it's, it's going to be really nice to have, I think. Um, the other thing that people were talking about was the garage door spring when that goes with these shelves. I really do think, it, it's hard to tell on camera, but I do think I left enough space up there where you could get that spring off a quarter turn at a time. I am no garage door installation expert by any means, but you know we'll find out what happens when that time comes. Um, I'll, I'll definitely make a video, just like I made a video to explain how I was going to get this thing down. I'll make a video on that and I could be wrong. Um, it, it could be really bad. I might have to, but worst case scenario, I have to take the shelf down. Uh, either take a piece of plywood out so you can go in between the, the support rails or I gotta take the, the entire shelf down. It's, it's not a huge, to me, I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, but so overall, this, thing, this thing's functioning pretty well. I think it's gonna do exactly what I need it to do and gonna make things a whole lot easier for me. Uh, technically, I can put my snowblower up there every time after I use it, let it dry out, put it back up there. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but that's, that's a little crazy. Uh, it's definitely made getting the snowblower down pretty easy, getting it back up pretty easy. Is it perfect? No, I still have to lift the snowblower up on here and off of here because of the way that my garage wall is. And yeah, I could have done things to get around that, but uh, you know, this, this is gonna work perfectly fine. If you're thinking about doing this yourself, please make sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, yet again, I did this just to show you my process and how I built mine. Um, I wouldn't necessarily tell you to do it this way. This was my first time doing this. I probably used way more pulleys and did way more stuff than I had to. And there was probably an easier way to do this. Actually, I know there was an easier way to do this. Um, if you would have just put the lift on the inside of the garage and all the hardware on the, on the ceiling of your garage, inside the garage, not up in the attic, it would have made this so much easier and saved so much time. Uh, but I wanted that clean look. I wanted things out of the way. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think and uh, what you would have done differently or if you see anything that looks you know, unsafe to you or something like that, let me know. Um, I'm not always, you know, I'm not perfect and I don't claim to be. But anyway, um, all the stuff that I used, I will leave in, I leave as links down in the description uh, in case you wanna see any of that. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching another video. And uh, if you liked it, give it a like. If you're liking what's going on here, subscribe. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in another video.